Hello my friends, today we're gonna look at a stable fusion model that will give you much much better photorealism. While SDXL has been great for a lot of images, what it has lacked is, well, photorealism, especially in people, humans in general. So let's see if this model can sort that and in my opinion, I think it's pretty good. Oh and by the way, to the person who uh, cut in front of me in line, I'm after you now. Remember guys, I do the research so you don't have to. So if you want to help me out, feel free to like, subscribe, put a comment down below. It's really going to help me out with the algorithm. But it's okay if you just want to watch too. AI. So it's probably about time to start changing this background now. We all have a lot of images from Stable Diffusion 1.5 and 1.4. But anyway, let's look at some SDXL images. And isn't this just fantastic. So this is an image of well, some sort of a Viking. We have a post-apocalyptic man with a skull mask in a sort of a dystopian society here. We have a woman in the jungle wearing some beautiful blue flowers there. Here's some kind of cyberpunk vibe, some scientist with mechanical eyes. I just love how well, the hair flows in this image and catches the light. Here's a black and white photo of an uh, elderly woman. Looks very nice. Here's uh, Superman. Looks a little bit like Henry Cavill, possibly. Cute little frog. We have a beautiful photo of a snow leopard. And I mean, if I didn't know this was an AI generated image, I would probably think this was real. Something I've noticed is that animals, stuff like that, they look very good. Fantastic even. The fur is great. The details here on the ground are fantastic. You have some branches here that actually look very realistic. So this is, in my opinion, very good. Now, skin in general leaves a little bit to be desired. I mean, this is pretty good, but I wouldn't say it's 100%. And you can especially see it on women, for example, where a lot of the time it's very smoothed out, a very like makeup, shiny kind of effect, but still pretty good. And in this photo here, well photo, the generated image here, this could be taken straight out of a cinematic scene from like a TV show or a movie or something. And I find this very nice. And here's an example of, of a car. And all this comes from a custom stable fusion SDXL model. And that one is Juggernaut XL to be specific. And Juggernaut was a model made for 1.5 that a lot of people have been using and is very happy with. And I downloaded this a couple of days ago. Well, not a couple of days, actually yesterday because it was uploaded yesterday. And I have been playing around with it and I found it's, uh, it's actually pretty good. So we have some examples here and it says it's supposed to be a photorealistic model. However, it's an early release. They're expecting to make it better, but still, you know, it, it's, it's, very good. And the custom models in general really start to outshine the base models, same as they did in Stable Fusion 1.4, 1.5, 2.0, 2.1, etc. And, and I expect this to keep happening with SDXL. So all you need to do is download this model here. There's a VAE that you can download here. It's not required, but it's recommended. So those two files and there's also a cinematic Excel LoRa you can get from here. And once you have those three files, depending on what UI you're using right now, the folders are pretty similar. Say you're in focus, for example, you have checkpoints. Does it, this is where the safe tensor, the main file goes to general Excel. Then you have the VAE, you put your VAE there. Then you have your LoRa's you can put your LoRa's there. And this is similar for automatic 11.11 or SDNet, Comfy, etc. They all have a similar structure of how you're supposed to, or of where you're supposed to put your model. And once you've downloaded that and pull them right in, restart your stable fusion, go into whatever it is you're using. Let's uh, have a raw candid cinematic scene of a Viking warrior and uh, let's generate two images here we are inside focus which is a very easy to use interface 
without a lot of features. Now you can check my previous video on that up in the top right corner. Now, if you just want to get started with Stable Fusion and if you're new to all of this, I can highly recommend it for beginners. And we can see here coming in live now are Viking Warrior. So we got two of them. Here's the first one. And just look at how fantastic this image was with a simple prompt. Raw candid cinematic scene of a Viking warrior. A negative prompt with just smooth plastic. Nothing fancy. For a lot of the images, you don't even need to use negative prompts nowadays. And the second one that we got was this one, which is also fairly okay. But I think that this one was a uh, just a tiny bit better. And this was the first generation we got while recording. So this was non cherry picked and I can highly recommend this model as of right now. Now there aren't a lot of SDXL custom models yet, but we'll, we'll, there are a few and uh, you can find the link in the description below. So uh, go check it out and see what other models you can find. Let's uh, generate something else here. So our Let's keep the raw candid cinematic scene here and let's um, take of a sci-fi spaceship in the future. Let's see what that gets us. So we've got two images here. They're fairly dark. However, I find that this one was uh, quite cool. Looks pretty good and actually looks uh, looks very cinematic. Now, remember that if you haven't used a new model before, you need to activate it uh, depending on your UI. It looks different. For focus, you're gonna go into advanced, just click this little checkbox down here, and then select your base model up here. And if you want to use the LoRa, you can select that in here. But for any user interface, whether it be comfy or automatic or whatever, it's fairly easy to change what model you're using. Raw candy cinematic scene of a cat in a street raining, neon sign, cyber. Um, Blade Runner. And we see we can see the outlines of our little cat can get in there. And uh well let's see if we get some happy accidents with this image. That's what I love about generative AI, all the little happy accidents and the beautiful generations that uh, just appear. Now when you're working with control net and stuff like that, you always kinda know like the direction where you're going. But in a user interface like this where everything is more or less random. It's great fun. Oh man, these are fabulous. I love these amazing images. Like I said previously, when it does animals, it's very photorealistic. And that's not specific for Juggernaut, but for SDXL in, in general. But um, man, for sure, these are great. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know your best model tips in the comments below. And as always, have a good one. See ya.